Sometimes the best thing you can do with a fighting game is buy it on day one when everyone else is buying it. Learning how to play from a beginner level and enjoying the well-populated online mode until gradually it fades away or gets an esports push through tournaments. But I'm going to put it out there that Phantom Breaker Omnia, which just released for all major consoles and PC, is a game that you should totally consider buying, but maybe later when it's on sale. <laughs> Just want to state clearly here at the beginning that I was sent the download code for this game so that I could make this video for you, but rest assured I have not been instructed to say anything specific about it. Now you're probably wondering why I'm not suggesting that you buy this game full price, and we'll get to that, but first let's talk about what this game is. Phantom Breaker is a fighting game that came out in Japan in 2011 for Xbox and then went on to get an arcade version and console update a couple years later. But the reason Phantom Breaker Omnia releasing 11 years later in 2022 is so confusing. It's because it was supposed to be localized 10 years ago, but for whatever reason, the Western release was canceled. So Phantom Breaker Omnia is actually the first time this game is getting a proper release outside of Japan. Now, to be honest, it's still a bit of a mystery to me why Rocket Panda Games decided to try and revive this title. Don't get me wrong, the game is actually quite a lot of fun and the characters have plenty of personality to them, but Phantom Breaker isn't riding the momentum of a popular anime like Dragon Ball Z, and it doesn't have a battle system that would attract the hardcore fighting game players that go to tournaments like EVO. And I think the publisher is quite aware of this because the trailers and marketing for this game are quite different to most other fighting games. Fighting! Lots and lots of fighting! Not gonna lie, I'm actually excited about this one! The announcer in the release trailer is so completely over the top that he practically sounds sarcastic, and it actually kind of feels like instead of trying to ride the esports wave like Street Fighter V or Tekken, they're going the opposite direction by trying to capture the casual market of people who don't really follow fighting game trends. If we kind of assume that Rocket Panda is aiming for the market that picks up random fun looking titles during things like seasonal Steam sales, that's when Phantom Breaker Omnia starts to make more sense. So before we continue, let me just state exactly who I think this game is for. People who just love a fun video game particularly ones from Japan with very overtly otaku-friendly designs. You can play it online, but just by intuition, I get the feeling it won't be populated enough to just find random matches. Instead, this is absolutely the sort of game I would load up when my friends come round, precisely because mashing the buttons kind of randomly does often result in cool stuff happening. And if you have any background in other fighting games, then trying to make the typical stuff work, like hit confirms, spamming projectiles, throw mix-ups, and all that is genuinely entertaining. If you're wondering whether this is the sort of game that pro players are gonna be practicing eight hours a day and winning tournaments on the main stage at EVO, then you already know that you're kind of in the wrong place. Okay, so you've found the game on sale, you know that it's not gonna carry your non-existent esports career, and you need something that you and your friends can all play because booting up Overcooked is just too damn stressful. Well, let's talk about the game itself. Unless you played the spin-off beat-em-up Phantom Breaker Battlegrounds, you probably have no idea who any of these characters are except for Makisei Kurisu, who is a guest character from Steinscape. What surprised me about Phantom Breaker is that pretty much any character you choose in the game has a fun, usable moveset, and they all look like they kind of walked straight out of the cosplay zone at an anime convention. This is also probably a good time to mention how epic the localization is on this game. It's kind of rare for niche titles from Japan to get an English dub, unless there's an external reason like an anime that's releasing around the same time or a large cult fanbase. The story portions of this game are delivered in a typical visual novel style, but I have to admit, I enjoyed the English dub so much that I actually kind of prefer it. Ninjas are still a thing? Well, yeah, foreigners can't get enough of us. What does that even mean? If Rocket Panda was only publishing this game to make it available for tournaments, I don't think they'd have bothered with the dub, but it's probably because they know that the bulk sales of this game will be in Steam sales that they went that extra mile with the dub. If we just forget about the tournament and esports side of fighting games, it's stuff like this which makes it more tempting to spend $10 on a random fighting game that you've never heard of. When it comes to the battle system itself, I have to say, it's fun to mash buttons in this game. On a very basic level, this game uses what's known as an auto combo system, and for casual gamers who like to hack and slash, this is going to feel instantly familiar. Just hit any of the main attack buttons three times in a row and viola, your character does a combo. I'm not going to pretend I sat in training mode for hours to find out how deep the combo system can go, but what I will say is that it doesn't feel like it has quite the same finesse as auto combo systems in games like Dragon Ball Fighters or Grand Blue Fantasy Versus. Those games form combos by drilling down through auto combo routes, but Phantom Breaker feels like it doesn't go quite as far with the combos. So with a bunch of friends who are all unfamiliar with the game, the inputs required are super simple, so you can all throw out special moves randomly and have a great evening. But if you enjoy practicing and mastering technical skills that translate to big damage in the game, 
I don't know, I just feel like this isn't quite that sort of game. Now there is a flip side to this. Phantom Breaker features a simple combo system so that anyone can jump in with a character they've never played before and throw out special moves instantly. But when you check the manual, the battle system itself actually goes deeper than what you might expect. Evade moves with slip shift, parry with protection, cancel out of clash situations, side swap dashing with invulnerability, guard cancel, counter burst cancel, guard breaks. Seriously, for a game that's clearly aimed at casual gamers, I was quite surprised to see more universal system mechanics than you find in many esports titles these days. Is that a good thing though? I'm not quite sure because although I'm all for games that are easy to pick up but go deeper if you're so inclined, I feel like there'd be a more clear reason to play Phantom Breaker if it focused on making the mastery of just one of these mechanics more important to winning matches. So, let's say you're convinced. You think a game full of otaku tropes in a traditional 2D fighter is a great idea, and even better, it's on sale. The last thing I think that might make or break the deal for you is the graphics. There's no two ways about it. This game is a decade old. And not only that, this game didn't even look up to date when it came out in 2011. Make no mistake, a game with traditional 2D graphics can easily look as good, if not better, than many of the 3D based engines that are out there today. But there are two things that make the graphics in Phantom Breaker Omnia kind of strange, and that's 3D and art direction. I had to look pretty carefully at first because many of the 3D models in this game have been traced or rendered well enough that at times many of them look like they were just hand drawn. But every now and then a character appears who is just clearly a 3D model and the mismatch between them is so jarring it's hard to ignore. Personally I don't have a problem with it and if anything I'm really impressed by how close they got some basic 3D shaders to emulate the look of a 2D fighter. But the bigger issue here is the art direction. In a fighting game the keyframes you choose are crucial to how exciting and powerful these moves feel. Phantom Breaker Omnia kind of fails to make you think that these characters are actually fighting each other. One of the main offenders here is the reeling animation. In a fighting game, the character that is taking damage has to look like they're being hit and reeling back in pain. But most of the characters in Phantom Breaker just look like they're experiencing some kind of stomach pain. The attack animations matter too, and this has a huge effect on how fast and powerful these moves look. I'm not sure if it's because the keyframes are selected from 3D animations, but instead of freezing the animation on a sword that has already swiped quickly, you kind of see this evenly interpolated sword swipe, which actually has the effect of making the animation look slower and have less impact. Finally, characters can attack or get hit while in the air just like any fighting game, and somehow it looks like characters are still standing on the ground, even when they're mid-air. Listen, in general, I think it's quite difficult to pass judgement on a fighting game because any time that you think that there's not that much depth to a game, someone will prove you wrong, you know, by spending hours and hours in the game and really figuring out what's possible until suddenly the game becomes a cult classic and you, you really can't tell when that sort of thing is going to happen. But what I can tell you is that if you're just looking for something fun to pass the time and especially if you've got friends over and you want a game that no one really knows how to play and so that you're all on the same baseline level, then there's plenty of fun to be had here, especially because there's a huge number of characters. Even if you just put on the story mode and listen to the voice acting, it is an actual romp listening to the, the English dub. It's so much fun. But what I don't want to do is promise you that there's a huge community out there that is playing this game seriously and that it's going to be easy to find online matches because it takes quite a lot for any fighting game, even if it's really well reviewed, for it to continue and maintain its momentum of a you know, large player base online. But I feel like the publisher is aware that this game makes more sense to just buy it cheaply on sale. I'm fairly convinced that that's where they think most of the profit will be made on this game. And if you do manage to pick it up on sale, then I think you're going to have quite a lot of fun just mashing buttons in it. Listen, that's all the time I've got for you today. I hope you've enjoyed this quick look at Phantom Breaker Omnia. I will see you all in the next Nihongo Gamer video and or stream. So until then, I'll see you around.